Hi, welcome to Randy Dewey's Art Park. This is my cat, Lovey Dovey. Lovey for sure. Um, he isn't actually always lovey, but tonight he is. Sometimes he'll just randomly bite you. People tell me that's affection, but I think he's proving that love hurts. <laughs> anyway, um, today's video that I'm gonna be uh, posting is focusing. You wanna get down? Okay, see ya. Today's video, I'm going to be focusing on showing you how to do a graded wash. Uh, a graded wash is a wash that is darker and it gradually gets lighter. The previous video uh, that I posted focused on doing a flat wash. This is the second in the series. The third one that I'm going to be doing, uh, showing you how to do is a variegated wash. Um, so those are going to be uh, kind of foundational techniques that you're going to need before you move forward into a lot of other subjects with watercolor. But if you get these techniques down, um, it'll give you a better chance of getting a great little painting. I'm going to start by doing a few little practice washes in the sketchbook just to show you how it's done and I'll talk you through it. And then after that, I'm going to focus on doing a short demonstration, a little winter landscape. I'm inspired by the, the, the extreme value contrast that nature provides. Um, I love the blues and grays of winter. There's also deep purples and reds in some of the, you know, hedgerow along the uh, roadways up here in upstate New York. It really is, it can be quite lovely. Um, so I'll talk you through the painting that I'm doing. Um, I typically use photo reference and that's what I'm going to be doing in this case. I doubt that I would really want to go outside and sit outside to a well, winter landscape. So snap a shot and then get yourself um, a photograph reference to use. So this is my photo reference. Um, I've tried to do this painting a couple of times and it never is quite as beautiful as the actual scene, but I always give it my best shot and I always learn something along the way. So I'll talk you through it. I'll let you know when I'm in trouble. I'll let you know how I'm trying to get out of trouble and I'll show you all kinds of different techniques that you can use when you're painting. So let's get started. If you've watched my videos before, you know that in my sketchbook, um, I always give myself a little boundary. I don't want to use the edge of the paper. And you don't have to use those that small a boundary, but for these little demos, I'm going to use just a little, uh, it's probably a two by three inch. And what I'm doing here is I'm loading paint and water on my brush. I do my first pass and then I dip my brush in the water. That dilutes the paints that are on the brush and then I give it a second pass. And then I stick it in the water again and I dilute the paint that's on my brush and then I give it another pass. And then what I'm doing there is wiping off the excess off the edge so you don't get a bloom. And here we have the notes. Take notes, always take notes. So it's a wet brush loaded with paint and water. One pass with the loaded brush, dip in the water after each pass. And then if it's not as dark as you want, you can let it dry, let it dry completely. You're gonna know that your watercolor paper is dry when it's no longer buckling and when it's not cold to the touch. If it feels cold to the touch, it's still wet. So you're gonna wanna leave it sitting a while if you're in a hurry, you can always use a hair dryer. And there's a second coat making it darker. Did it seem to do you any good? Did your time 
How much longer will you suffer in this life? But don't give up. Just hold on tight. It'll be alright. And here I'm trying to nail down different formats for doing this winter landscape. The color mixtures that I'm using for the distant tree line, it's a combination that I use frequently. Probably lean on it a little too much. Ultramarine, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson. And then the shadows, my plan is to use alizarin crimson cobalt violet and ultramarine blue. Here I am with my piece of Arches 140 pound cold press. Um, I've taken a sheet of paper and torn it down to a smaller size just for the de this demonstration. You can paint larger. I have a tendency to paint small. Um, there's no right or wrong. Do what you're comfortable doing. Close your eyes. Get some rest I'm by your side Lay your head on my chest I know you've had A really bad day But I'm right here It's gone trying to lay in my washes, my initial washes. These are more like variegated washes than they are um, graded washes. The sky was done with a very light graded wash and then I did charge in a little extra paint. So it's probably technically more like a variegated wash. So what I did here was I just put pure water on the top, not on the snow. And now I'm going to work it while it dries. So I can use that paint and, and the water on the surface of the paper so that I don't have to paint every branch, but I can create the illusion of the branches by letting the paint just spread. Now, if your paper is too wet, um, your paint will spread too far. So that's something you'll have to practice. You'll have to know when's the right time to apply that paint combination. The other thing that I noticed here is um, this uh, alizarin crimson ultramarine burnt sienna combination. Sometimes the pigments will s separate and you can see um, up there um, that it almost looks like the burnt sienna has kind of separated. I like that. Um, so once you learn properties of certain paints and how they interact with each other, you can use that to your benefit. That's where you got to take notes and you have to practice. Here again I'm applying uh, clear water and I'm doing a second layer. I'm trying to deepen those shadows and this is where I got into a little bit of trouble. Um, I think I deepened them too much. They were too purple. I didn't really like it so I thought what am I going to do about that? So here I'm going into my sketchbook and trying to figure out um, what colors I'm going to use. 
um, instead of just plunging forward, um, I decided to kind of get perspective on it, put a, put a few little tr uh, branches in, a few of those little trees, just to get a sense of it. But I knew that I had created those shadows too purpley. So what I did was I tried to put, um, it was a vermilion, which is an orange. I tried to do an orange wash over it. Did sort of tone it down a little, but this is where I got into a little trouble. <laughs> and then in the back, I'm just doing very small controlled washes. So it's clear water and then in just specific areas. The, the little grasses that I'm putting in, that's all on dry paper. I'm trying to repeat um, colors. Uh, it creates unity, so I'm repeating some of those. Here, uh, I knew those shadows were too dark, and so I'm using a very stiff bristled brush, and I'm scrubbing, and I'm, so I'm trying to scrub gently so I don't ruin the paper and then I'm blotting with my paper towel. And you can see I was able to lift off uh, a fair amount of those dark, dark shadows. I think it's a little better. Still not what I hoped for, but we just, we do the best we can. And the thing that I have learned in the past, I might've quit at that point. I'm like, oh, this is a lost cause. Don't quit. Even if it's not exactly what you were hoping, Continue on and finish it because a pile of unfinished paintings, they just haunt you. And um, so I would suggest finishing come what may.